It started with a pitch. The date is the 18th of March 2023, and Ireland have just won the Grand Slam in the annual rugby competition called the Six Nations. The country is elated, and the sport of the oval ball is more relevant than ever before. Fast forward three days later to the 21st of March, and I'm taking part in a photo shoot as part of the promotion for the Ireland Young Filmmaker of the Year Awards 2023. Also taking part in this photo shoot is the head of young people at RTE, Ireland's national broadcaster. Now, two important pieces of context here. One, I was familiar with this person from having presented an RTE kids show previously. And number two, I had always really, really wanted to mix my love for filmmaking with my love for rugby ever since I'd fallen in love with the sport back in 2018. You can see where this is going. I turn to this person and I say something along the lines of, I think it would be really worth discussing a potential series about the Rugby World Cup later this year, given all the hype about the tournament at the moment. Thankfully, she turned to me and said, of course, that's a fantastic idea. Do you have my email? She proceeded to give me her email and then said, let's organize a meeting and hatch a plan. And that was the moment that the eight episode digital series, Rock and Roll, was born. We had our meeting, we discussed some ideas for the series, we talked about what would work, what wouldn't work, before getting to the very important practical next steps. One, I would need to apply for commissioning through a production company, either my own or someone else's. Now at the time, I didn't have a production company, and as of December 2023, I still don't have a production company. So I was going to need to reach out to an existing one that would be willing to back my idea. And it was only ever going to be Taylor Films, the production company that made that RTE Kids show that I presented in the past. Two, I would need to put together a one-pager that would act as a formal proposal to RTE that they would then either give the green light or the red light. So myself and the production company spent a month and a half, one, discussing how involved they would be in production, and two, finalizing and polishing off this one page or document, which really ended up being a lot longer than one page. We refined and refined and refined this document until finally, on May 16th, 2023, we were all really satisfied with where it was at. On April 5th, the seed was planted at the in-person meeting. On May 16th, the formal proposal was handed in and production was proposed to kick off on September 4th. There were three months where the project had nearly ground to a complete halt because we had built the foundations of the project, but we weren't close enough to production for it to be a priority for any of the organizations involved. But when we reached the middle of August, it basically became absolute cramming season for pre-production. And what I found strange throughout this whole part of the development process was that there was never really one celebratory green light moment. There was never a wonderful, definitive, this series is happening moment. It just sort of built and built and built and built until one day I received the very first call sheet from the producer Martine in my email inbox. And this was a very special moment because for the first time in my career, I had received a call sheet with my name down on it as director on a professional, industry standard, production company backed series. And at that moment, two months of intense, relentless, joyful, nationwide production kicked off. Tomorrow is the 5th of September, 2023. What does that mean? That means that tomorrow is my first day as a professional director. Sundays were for filming in my studio and establishing a base edit. Mondays were for filming the bulk of the episode for typically four hours at a rugby club. Tuesdays were for editing the first draft of the episode for the production company to then review. Wednesdays were for editing the second draft for RTE to review and then editing the third draft, usually the picture locked version. Thursdays were for passing the edit over to the production company who would then do the grade and the sound mix and the upload. And Fridays were for writing the script for the following following week. Saturdays were for publishing the episode and on Sundays it was time to repeat. The golden question, how was it? How did it go? I had so much fun and that is just the best bit of news that I could be finishing all of this off with. We did that for four weeks back to back before there was then a break week during which I shrewdly decided to film a whole short film 
my new short film Alive Again. That was a shameless plug. And then there were another four consecutive weeks after that break. This series mixed with college, starting college, mixed with my new short film, it really made life feel nearly as intense as it did during my last year in secondary school, which was the most intense year of my life. But we did it. Week after week, we got it done. And before we knew it, all eight episodes of Rock and Roll had been signed, sealed, delivered, uploaded, and most importantly, appreciated. Seven months on from that first meeting on April 5th, the final episode of eight was aired on November 4th. With the help of an incredible co-host, a dedicated crew, a brave and entrusting production company, and a broadcaster willing to listen to a 19-year-old's ideas, I finally felt able to call myself a director, while having made something I was really proud of. This project made it possible for me to merge my passion for filmmaking and my passion for rugby in a meaningful way. And it all started with a pitch.